live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering NAB 2017. Brought to you by HGST. Welcome back to theCUBE, live in Las Vegas at the NAB Show. We're having a great day so far. Very excited to introduce you to my next guest, Kevin Bailey, co-founder and VFX supervisor at Atomic Fiction and the CEO of Conductor Technologies. Never sure. a boring day for you with those two <laughs> titles, I can imagine. No, I, I like to joke that it, I like to make sure that I always have the most exciting job in the world, so I had to pick three just to make sure that I never had a down moment spoil that that edict. Wow, I am impressed. <laughs> so you just spoke at the virtual NAB conference last mm -hmm. month on the visual effects in the cloud, um, power and control. There's something that I found really interesting was that six years ago, mm -hmm. you were kind of on an island going, I have this hunch about cloud. Tell us about what was that hunch, why did you have it, and what has it generated so far? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. The, the, the hunch was less of like, hey, cloud looks like a great opportunity, and it was more of like knowing what wasn't working in the industry as it was at that time. There were all kinds of companies that were kind of like having financial troubles or having a hard time delivering projects, tons of bankruptcies, and just really sad stories everywhere. And we looked at the market and said, there's a ton of work here. Like, this doesn't make sense. Some of the best entertainment is being made right now, and it all relies on visual effects. What's wrong? And the further we broke down the problem, the more we realized that like, fixed infrastructure within a, a market that like, naturally ebbs and flows, it just did, there wasn't a match there. So through that problem, we looked for solutions and cloud was a very obvious one at that point, so we just made the jump. And tell us about uh, Atomic Fiction versus Conductor Technologies, Chicken <coughs> Egg, which one came first and how are they collaborating together? Yeah, Atomic Fiction came first. Uh, it was almost seven years ago at this point that we started Atomic and we looked for any kind of a way to use cloud. We started using AWS directly. We then used a tool called Zinc. Um, and as we grew, we found that the needs of the company were changing so radically that nothing that was out there could actually keep up with our pace of growth. We had all this customized pipeline that you know, we couldn't find a way to like get it into the cloud. So we built our own, and that was called Conductor. And after, I think we were working on like Game of Thrones and The Walk and it just started on Deadpool that we realized it was working so well that we decided to spin it off as its own company and make a go for actually turning it into a product that could help everybody in the same way that the cloud had helped Atomic Fiction. Fantastic, but one of my favorite movies is The Walk. Awesome. And I was looking at your website and you, you think as a viewer, how did they film this? <laughs> you know, these, this day and age, so much is CGI. Tell to us about what real-time cloud rendering is. Um, how does it enable a movie like The Walk or Deadpool mm -hmm. to have that awe-inspiring, jaw-dropping reaction from the audience? Well, I think a large portion of bringing that jaw-dropping reaction to the audience and that level of realism is being able to run productions in the way that they want to be run, right? Uh, and what I mean by that is, let's take a movie like The Walk, where you have to recreate 1974 New York and the Twin Towers in all these different lighting scenarios. That means we have to build every building, every rain gutter, every, every hot dog stand in the street down to exacting detail, and that just takes a lot of time. So we spent a ton of time, probably the first three quarters of the schedule, just building the city, building the, bu building the city, and we couldn't render anything at that point. And it wasn't only until the very end of the show that we were able to like just say, all right, now we have New York is there, let's put it on the screen. But that takes millions of hours of computing to actually get that done. The Walk, for example, it used 9.1 million processor hours of rendering. That's over a thousand years wow. on a single processor wow. to get it done. So if we hadn't had the cloud, we would have to have been like, oh, what can we render first so we don't bottleneck at the end of the schedule and really kind of like trying to bend production into the box that we of fixed infrastructure that we have, but with the cloud, we don't have to do that. We can say we can go as big as we want to at the very end of the show and get it done if that's what makes sense for the show. And because that's what makes sense for the show, the creative just ends up being that much better. And the same was true for Deadpool, the same is true for Star Trek. Um, these movies, they just sort of, you want to craft love into the very beginning part of it so the stuff you generate at the end is as beautiful as it can be. So is cloud really freeing production <coughs> from being able to operate in the way that it needs to operate. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because the traditional model is, 
a visual effects company builds a data center and stuffs it full of computers and best case, with like three weeks lead time, you can like rent a bunch of racks of computers and shove them in a closet somewhere and get your project done and it ends up being expensive and painful. You need a big team to man all that stuff. Whereas with cloud, we can say, hey, I need a thousand computers three minutes from now and boom, a thousand computers spin up out of nowhere. Um, and the great thing that we've done with Conductor as well is we've gone and negotiated per minute software licensing with Autodesk and the Foundry and Isotropics and Chaos Group and all these big software vendors in the industry. So not only can you get compute by the minute, you can also get all the software that you need by the minute, right? So you can have 3,000 nodes running Autodesk's Arnold and you, uh, you run them for 42 minutes and you only pay for 42 minutes of 3,000 licenses of Arnold, right? Um, so it's, it's really transformative from a flexibility standpoint. And, and the cost model really yeah. flips it on its head. And by the way, the artists get the result back faster, right? Because you can scale up so big and get the result back to them so quickly without any cost penalty, uh, they see the, the fruits of their labor while the ideas are still fresh in their head, which is like a huge, like, intangible benefit that has real economic benefits. Absolutely. One of the things and themes that we've heard of today is that speed is key. Mm -hmm. Absolutely critical to whatever's going to happen or whether or not on a shoot, a, a, a vision changes direction. Mm -hmm. And without having the power of the cloud to facilitate something on a dime, there's delays, which all add up all adds up to economic impact. Yeah, and you know, uh, back on one of our earliest projects rendered in the cloud, uh, Flight, the Robert Zemeckis movie with Denzel Washington, um, that exact thing happened where it was like at the very end, he, Zemeckis realized that he needed this extra set of like 100 visual effects shots, um, and if it hadn't been for the cloud, we would have had to say, no, sorry, we can't do these, we got to find somebody else to do them. But because of the, the ability of the cloud to accommodate that last minute creative um, epiphany, we were able to actually do the work. Um, so it really is like truly transformative um, and allowed us to bring in you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars of extra revenue that we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Absolutely. In terms of, of some of the public cloud providers, tell us who you're working with on, on that end. Yeah, so we're working with uh, Google right now using Google Compute Engine on the back end and we're actually uh, moving forward with uh, Microsoft and Azure, um, adding it as an option later in the year. So uh, hopefully at the end of the year, we'll be able to support you know, all the large cloud providers and be able to um, say, hey, you know, Studio X, like we know you have you know, an, uh, an affinity for Google right now, but on the next project, maybe you need a very specific GPU type, or there's a company in China that needs to do some work and Google isn't there. Um, now Azure is your thing, right? So uh, I think that the world of cloud providers competing against one another is going to be really beneficial for everyone in our industry, for sure, and we want to be there to facilitate uh, a little bit of like, like choose whoever's best, right? Right, giving you that ability to really kind of be agnostic on the back end. Yeah, that's so exactly right. As we look at these massive resources that, that studios are generating, um, creating such interactive films, what are some of the precautions that you that, that you see and that you can help them mitigate against leveraging the power of cloud? Mm -hmm. Well, one of, the, uh, one of the benefits of cloud is you only have to pay for what you use, just like electricity, right? One of the downsides of cloud is you have to pay for what you use, right? <laughs> so uh, if you're not careful about the render you put in the cloud or the simulation you put in the cloud or how long you keep data in the cloud, things can get really expensive really quickly. So one of the things we did, and this is actually why uh, we kind of spun Conductor off as its own company and we just raised our uh, Series A round of funding back in December to build the team out because a lot of this stuff is really complicated, is one of the, the big efforts in kind of a post-funding world for Conductor is on analytics and being able to use data to help people drive productions better. So, you know, in the very beginning, we have cost limits, right? Where you can say, on this shot, I don't want to spend more than $1,000, or I never want this artist to be able to spend more than 1,500 bucks a day, right? Um, 
but in the future, I think that there's all the kind of like cloud buzzwordy things that actually come into like real play here where we can use machine learning to detect when things are taking too long and alert people. We can uh, tell people how much a render is going to cost before they even submit it maybe. Uh, we can use computer vision to check for uh, bad things happening in the middle of a render before a human ever has a chance to lay, lay eyes on it. So there's all kinds of stuff that we can do with data to help mitigate some of the downsides of cloud and hopefully only leave people with like great insights to help them run production better. That's fantastic. One of the things that really, really interests me is, is, is the machine learning and the artificial intelligence to be able to look at whether it's a, a broadcast outlet or a film studio, mm -hmm. to be able to take a look at and evaluate the, the value and the additional revenue streams that can come, but also, in your case, maybe even leveraging AI and machine learning to make certain processes faster, thereby mm -hmm. lowering costs. Yeah, we can actually make proactive suggestions based on like, you know, thousands or millions of data points and say like, hey, if you tweak this value on your shading rate here, like, you're going to end up uh, with a great visual and not uh, spend any more time or actually spend less, right? Um, so things like that, and then also working together with production management systems, like, uh, like the guys at Autodesk have a product called Shotgun that deals with schedules and artist assignments. And they can have all the schedule information. We have all the sort of like infrastructure information. If we correlate those two data sets together, then we'll be able to actually proactively tell somebody when we think a shot is running behind schedule or um, a shot needs more optimization. I mean, there's all kinds of things that we can use just purely using data uh, and a trained uh, machine learning model to actually help people run their entire business better, um, not just an individual shot. Right, well, six years ago when you had this hunch, <laughs> you said there, there were some skeptics around there. <laughs> yeah. One, you must feel pretty validated by now but are, are you kind of one of the go-to guys, go-to companies of this is how to do it properly, these are all of the advantages, economic advantages, et cetera, that we can provide? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, there were definitely people that told me I was absolutely crazy when I first got started. Um, some of them are actually using Conductor now, so that's kind that's of like a, good, right? yeah, it's a good, it's a good validation point. <laughs> yeah. And there were a lot, they had a lot of reasons for thinking that you know we were insane because uh, we kind of were, um, but uh, we just sort of believed deep down that it was going to work. And so, uh, so yeah, I mean, now I think we're we're in a great position to help people and and. For me, and you know, this is always like a, a thing that I, you know, sometimes like get a hard time for. But it, you know, I'm I'm so passionate about this industry moving into the cloud that um, I'm just as happy to talk to somebody about how to do it, maybe on their own if they're trying to do it at a small scale, or what our competitors might be doing. Um, and really, through that, I've kind of we found a space where we don't really have any competitors yet and we're breaking new ground, um, really servicing the sort of medium and enterprise scale customers um, and that kind of flexibility and scale and security that they need. So it's sort of interesting in this, <laughs> in a way, this sort of like selfless, like just being excited about cloud has helped us to find a market that we can really truly add like insane value to. Wow, that is fascinating. Well, your passion for it is, is evident. <laughs> thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us on theCUBE. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a great time with the rest of the show and we'll see you on theCUBE sometime soon. I always do, thank you again. Excellent. We want to thank you for watching. Again, we are live at NAB Las Vegas. Stick around, we will be right back.